right, we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Chantel Smith. I'm the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Inclusive Communities within the Honors College at UMD. Um, on behalf of the Honors College, we just wanna say congratulations again on your acceptance to UMD and your invitation to the Honors College. We're so excited for you during this time. So during this week, as most of you may know, we're, we've been offering opportunities to learn more about our eight unique programs, directly from the staff and students who represent them. Um, we're, we're hoping that this information that you're learning helps you determine which programs most interest to you so you can complete the program preferencing form by the February 19th deadline. So right now, we're about to learn more about our integrated life science program. While we encourage you to send in your questions through the Q&A section, we kindly ask that you hold off until the end since there's a chance your questions may be addressed during the presentation and then we'll open up for um, Q&A once the presentation is over. And just to reiterate, um, there is a chat section and then there's a Q&A section. Please put your questions in the Q&A section so we can all track and see them. Um, in the chat section, we cannot. So um, just FYI on that. So I'll go ahead and pass the mic over so you can learn more about um, integrated life sciences. Thank you, Chantel, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the ILS chat online. And let me share my screen with all of you. Uh, Chantel hosts disabled participant screen sharing. So if you could grant us the privilege, please. Okay, let me try again. Great. So before we start, congratulations, everyone, uh, on your acceptance to the Honors College at the University of Maryland. So I am Najib El Sayed, uh, and I'm the director of ILS. I'm also a professor of cell biology and molecular genetics. So we're here tonight, as you know, to introduce you to our very special living learning community uh, that's designed actually to ease you uh, uh, into your transition to the University of Maryland and prepare you for future, future success uh, in a, uh, wherever your aspirations may lie in the life sciences. So most importantly, actually, we're here to answer your questions uh, following a brief overview of our program. And uh, presenting with me tonight is Dr. Sabrina Kramer, who is the Associate Director uh, of ILS, and she will be introducing herself in a moment. Uh, we're also being joined by Ms. Jayla Townsend, actually. Hi, Jayla, uh, who is the Assistant Director of ILS. And, uh, and you'll be hearing from her also in a moment, although we don't have you on the introductory slide, Jilla, and the, we'll let you pop in. And we're also being joined by five brilliant ILS students, uh, three sophomores and two juniors who have agreed to answer your questions and share their experiences about uh, ILS. In fact, they will be the stars of the show tonight, and, uh, and they also will be introducing themselves in a moment. Uh, so here we go, Dr. Kramer. Okay, um, so just to get some introductions out of the way, uh, my name is Sabrina Kramer. I'm the Associate Director for the ILS program. Um, my research background is actually in uh, plant virology. It's where I got my PhD, um, but I worked at the Teaching Center for six years on campus. So um, I'm a Maryland alum, which is where I got my PhD. Um, I teach our second year course, which is cell biology. Um, I advise our second year students and I run our internship and research program. Um, and I am totally a science education geek. Um, I think teaching is super fun and I enjoy it a lot. And I totally geek out about talking about education as my students can tell you. Um, so uh, that's me, my ILSers. So starting off with Mustafa, if you don't mind introducing yourself and then you guys can chill into the end of the presentation when you can take questions. So. Mustafa and then L, and then we will move on to the next page. Sounds good. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Mustafa, um, as you can see in the slide. Um, I am a physiology and neurobiology major, which is just a special specialization within the biology major itself. And I also have a minor in Asian American studies. Um, I'm a junior right now, so I've taken a large chunk, I've taken all of the coursework in ILS uh, that, that's required. So if you have any questions regarding that, uh, definitely let me know. L. Hi, um, I'm L. I'm a sophomore in ILS. My major is environmental science and policy, and I have a minor in GIS. So 
geographic information systems. Um, I also intern in the entomology department, and I want to go into research, and then I want to do uh, environmental education. So, if you have if you have questions about getting research internships or uh, doing things, doing clubs, volunteers outside of ILS, definitely the person. I will also throw out that Mustafa was uh, my TA for Cell Bio last fall, and Elle just spent 10 straight days with me in London for our study abroad course. Don't worry. We still like you. <laughs> <laughs> Emily? All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Emily. I'm a biochemistry and computer science double major. Um, I'm a sophomore, and in the future, I want to pursue something research or medical school related. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Nithya. I am a general biology and psychology double degree, and I'm currently a junior, so I've also taken most of the ILS courses, and I'm also planning on going to dental school. And Emily? Hi everyone, I'm also Emily. I'm a sophomore biochemistry and public health science double degree. Um, and in the future, I plan on pursuing medical school and potentially a career in public health. And before I go to the next slide, Jayla? Sure. Hi everyone. It is great to be in community with you all today. My name is Jayla Townsend. I'm the assistant director of ILS. Um, and so I instruct the introduction to the university class that you all will potentially take your first semester, as well as our service learning course, as well as do a lot of community building events and outreach. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But it's good to see you all. Thank you. OK, so let me take a moment to tell you a little bit about ILS. So as I mentioned a bit earlier, uh, uh, ILS is a great environment uh, to uh, ease your transition at university on campus and prepare you for the life sciences, no matter what your aspirations are, whether it's medical school, a PhD, whether it's in public health, whatever it may be. And we do that with, uh, we achieve it through many things. Uh, first and foremost, a supportive community. Okay, so, so the development of an inclusive community focused both on living and learning together is uh, without a doubt the central mission and the most valued aspect uh, of the ILS experience. And, uh, so it's this community is designed to help you with sometimes your rocky transition to university. It provides that safety net what many students need. It increases your engagement and uh, builds or helps you build the launching path for you to explore uh, the fantastic life transforming opportunities that you will encounter on campus. So what does uh, the community mean? You live together as you will learn in a moment, you take the same ILS courses, first couple of years, you study together. And in addition to the mentoring advice you get from your program staff, you support each other. So Another pillar of the ILS education, as you see on the slide, is the accelerated academic program, starting with sophomore level classes. So typically, students who are invited to join ILS would have already received uh, full credit for freshman biology sequence, either via biology AP or some other mechanism. ILS courses are uh, specifically structured to enhance active learning and small group collaboration which have been shown to facilitate uh, deep learning. Uh, another component of ILS is the research aspect. And the uh, ILS facilitates research opportunities on the UMD campus and throughout the area. Many students choose to do research, at, again, as you will hear a bit later, at med many federal research institutes around us and local schools of medicine. Uh, I want to emphasize the rigorous uh, scientific inquiry and the development uh, of cutting edge research skills are also a central goal of ILS's mission. Uh, we like to guide our students through an authentic research internship relevant to their career goal. Even if some of our students don't want to do research as a major component of their future careers, we believe that learning how to engage in scientific reasoning will allow them to incorporate research findings in their professional practice and make better decisions throughout their uh, personal lives, actually. And uh, finally, I'd like to talk, uh, speak for a moment about our service. All of our ILS, ILS students dedicate a portion of their time and talent uh, serving local community partner as a first-year student. 
And this is typically a self-selected project. And uh, what we like about the, the service learning experience is provides a holistic perspective to the already very rigorous coursework. It encourages students to learn from people whose backgrounds are different from their own, and it encourages inclusive relationship building. So we are very purposeful in, uh, in our effort to work together to better facilitate your learning and success at the university. And the results really uh, speak for themselves. Our students, you know what, uh, I mean, uh, 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 I should have had this slide for the last two minutes, but anyway, <laughs> this is a summary of what I was talking about here. And uh, 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 I should mention that uh, uh, our we have very high success rates for our students uh, uh, who apply to all sorts of professional schools and graduate schools. And at right underneath the picture here, you can see the breakdown of what the typical profile of an ILS class, or at least a student's uh, biological sciences, about 60%. Uh, bio e chem e majors about 20 percent uh, uh biochem and chemistry about 20 percent and 10 percent in other majors and with regards to professional goals uh, roughly about 55 percent of our students want to go to medical school another five percent want to combine an md and a phd program about 15 percent want to go to graduate school for a phd about 15 percent have typically joined the workforce and about 12 percent go uh, for other professional degrees I will now yield the floor to Dr. Kramer, who is going to lead the rest of the session until we start talking to our students. Dr. Kramer. Awesome. Thank you, Najib. Um, so the way things are structured, we uh, your first year in ILS, we essentially let you know, or we, we learned that is helpful um, for us to um, designate and decide what your, your ILS courses are. Um, and then the second year, you're gonna have a choice. So in your first year, you would take HLC 100 and 102, um, and depending on your background, um, so your preparation, um, you would take genetics in the spring, or you would uh, take 280, which are is our quantitative and integrative concepts in biology, so introduction to bioinformatics, talked by Dr. El Said, um, in the fall semester of either your freshman or your sophomore year, depending on whether or not you come in um, with credit for first semester biology courses. Um, your second year, you get to choose two of the sophomore level courses. Um, so everything from my honor cell biology class, which I'm sure my lovely students can tell you all about. Um, I'm looking at you sophomores and Mustafa. Um, and um, English uh, health courses, um, bioinformatics. We are currently teaching this semester an ethics course. Um, so that's topics in scientific integrity and medical ethics. Um, and then every three, four years, uh, we do a study abroad course, which we just finished this past uh, January that Elle can tell you about. So we have a great contingent of uh, faculty. And again, I almost forgot, Jayla teaches our um, 100 and 102 courses and coordinates all of that as well. Um, but the second year, you get a lot more choices. The first year, we have learned it's helpful um, to have a prescribed uh, course set for you while you get used to the university, and it helps to build um, friendships and community amongst you and your fellow students. So just a general overview. My screen is frozen. So give me a moment. To... <laughs> Did I miss anything, Jayla? Well, he is working on that. Any questions so far? And anything my students want to add in about our beautiful classes? Or how amazing the cell bio class is? Can't talk about that one. Study abroad is awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so specifically, for you, your course preparation. We, for ILAS, we're looking for people who like the life sciences. I mean, really like the life sciences because you're going to be taking a lot of classes in the life sciences. So if taking accelerated courses in genetics is not super thrilling to you, um, you may not enjoy our coursework. So um, if you are currently taking AP Bio, 
um, or IB bio or dual enrollment, um, please take, so for dual enrollment, please finish your courses and submit your transcripts. You uh, paid for the college credits, get credit for them. Um, for AP and IB, IB friends, take your tests and actually send the scores. We don't automatically get your score. Same for your college transcripts. Even if you're in the community college system of Maryland, we don't automatically get your transcripts. So you have to send those to us over the summer to get credit for your work. Um, if um, you are not taking those, that is okay. We are looking for people who have preparation biology and are interested in biology and the life sciences. Um, as you can tell, we've got majors from everywhere from biochemistry, chemistry, um, public health science, computer science, biology, um, and let us not forget our entomology friends, which are still under the biological sciences. Um, so keeping that in mind. Um, and when you fill out the preferencing board, include those scores. Include if you're going to take exams. Include that you're actually excited about biology and the life sciences. We would like you to be. Um, otherwise, you will probably not enjoy like I said, our classes. Did I miss anything, friends? Okay, next slide. Uh, also to clarify, like there, there are people who are incredibly interested in the life sciences, but also doing things like engineering and computer science that have nothing to do with the life sciences, but still want to take these classes and are very interested in the life sciences. Yes. If that is you, friends, make sure to include that in your preferencing form. There's actually a little box that you can fill out for your interest into each program. Make sure to include that information. Because um, again, we you're going to be taking a lot of bio courses um, as part of our program. And they're advanced bio courses. Um, so if you don't like biology, we don't want you to be miserable. <laughs> um, but if you think it is super fun and exciting and interesting, then we are the place for you. Um, so include that information, especially if your major doesn't match up right correctly uh, or line directly with the life sciences. Okay, so next slide. We are on research experiences. So I coordinate the internship program. There is a requirement um, to do a research internship for your citation um, in ILS. And the way this works is um, you figure out the, you know, the subject, right? Um, you figure out when is going to work for you. Um, how it's going to work around your schedule. Um, we are there to help step you through the entire process. You still have to get the internship yourself, um, but we've had people do internships in hearing and speech sciences at the Smithsonian, um, in um, clinical research and hospitals, and in field research with Shetland ponies. Um, no joke. Uh, and ferrets and um, crabs, literally crabs, um, so it really kind of depends on what you're interested in, what you're excited about. And we get to cheat a little bit because we're in the D.C. area. We have access to all kinds of wonderful places. Um, so we have the Smithsonian. We have the USDA. Um, we have the FDA. We have the School of Medicine, which runs two lovely summer programs, the Summer Scholars Program and the um, Cancer Research Internship, the Nathan, Nathan Schnappner um, Internship in Cancer Research. NIST, Children's National, NIH, um, because we are in this location, uh, we have a ton of opportunities available depending on your interests and availability. Um, so this can be during the semester um, or during the summer or winter, um, depending on what you're available for and what works with your schedule and interests. Great. Next slide. Thank you. Um, we do have required service, but these service hours are actually built into the 100 and 102 classes. So that's that's essentially where they're held. Um, we have a variety of different service learning opportunities depending on your interests. So everything from mentoring and tutoring um, to gardening, working with local food banks, um, social and healthcare services. Um, it really depends about what you're excited about and passionate about. Um, and you put together the proposal for what you want to do for your service hours um, in the first semester. And then the second semester, um, you actually do those service hours. Um, and we've had students who create their own student organizations. So everything from foundations in science and health, uh, global dental brigades, public health borders, so our local chapter of these. Um, we have rising researchers, um, uh, Terps of First service members, the Every Child Project, which came out during COVID, which allowed um, our students to tutor students who K through 12 students who were um, at home during COVID and needed extra help in the material. 
um, and difficult with the, or having difficulty transitioning to online education. Um, this is actually right up Jayla's alley. Is there anything you want to add, my friend? The purpose of this service learning piece is just so we are, like you all will become the future of science, biology, life sciences, and medicine. So we need to make sure that we're also giving back to the community. And so students have the opportunity to tell me what is it that you're passionate about. And so this is something that you all um, specifically can gear towards your own interests, your own passions. And I think is a really cool opportunity for all of you. So I see we're getting a bunch of questions in which is perfect because we're just ending our presentation. Um, so that's the basic information about the life sciences program. Um, but we are here to answer your questions. Um, so if you could type that into the Q&A, that'll help us make sure we can answer that. We will keep monitoring that. Um, yeah. And this will allow us and our lovely, wonderful students to answer your questions. Um, for the policy and logistics things, we are happy to answer, but our students can answer all the wonderful questions about what it's like to actually live in the Plata Hall. We do have a required residential or resi uh, residential requirement to live in the Plata Hall, um, which is conveniently on North Campus, right next to the gym and the new dining hall. Um, and they can answer all of these many questions. It has been a while since I was a freshman, so I am not so good at answering some of those. And with that, if we want to take a look at our question. So, um, so Benjamin asked to Mustafa and Emily, um, could you please share your pre-med path specifically as it relates to research and clinical experiences? Did you have opportunities to integrate these experiences from your first year and what coursework have you found to be the most beneficial to your future goals um, or most exciting? Yeah, I can start that. I can start off with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, just in general, just the gist of what I've done so far. Um, in terms of clinical experience, I've had the opportunity to work as an MA at a clinic, um, as well as a um, an assisted living center. So that's been a large chunk of what I've done in terms of clinical work. Um, when it comes to research, I have done um, in a summer internship in the past, as well as currently I'm working in a lab um, on campus in the animal uh, in um, the animal and avian sciences department. Um, and regarding the part where you asked, um, where we integrate that into the into my freshman year, um, I sent into my first year of college. Well, I would say that, um, well, my general advice for all of you students in general is to kind of take things uh, one, step at a, one step at a time. Um, when you first get into college, it's really just a point of exploration and just trying to basically adjust to a new lifestyle um, where, you know, you're, a lot more independent than what you were back in high school. So um, I didn't immediately jump into those activities, but um, as I got adjusted, I uh, picked up research over the summer um, afterwards. Um, I was able to get my certification um, around that time as well. And going into the next year when I felt more settled, um, I picked up those jobs and roles. So um, yeah, it's definitely something that you can start to look into at that point um, and something that you can continue to explore as you take more coursework. Um, um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend taking your time, just trying to figure out what, uh, what works and what doesn't and, uh, going through there. Emily, is there, oh, go ahead. So, um, I'm also just a sophomore right now, so I didn't have so a lot of research experience so far. Um, I did do a biopharmaceutical internship over the summer um, in a lab where I was dealing with mRNA vaccines. Um, but like Mustafa said, usually the ILS um, Honors College doesn't really recommend that you take, that you start to look for research in your first year. Um, I know coming in, I didn't have a lot of like good study habits um, specifically for college because college is really a different ballgame than high school. So your first year really is about like settling in, meeting new people, getting your feet under you, getting those good study habits down. And then once you get the feel of what college is really like, then you can kind of integrate research into um, your plan. And there's a lot of resources in ILS and also in the pre-health um, advising office that can help you kind of um, structure your um, for your plan and what it's gonna be like to apply to medical school. In terms of courses, um, I actually found 
Dr. El Saeed's um, 208 class the most interesting? Um, I never really heard of like bioinformatics and all that stuff in the beginning, but uh, as a first year class, it was pretty cool to learn about that stuff. Oh, and just to plug something in, because uh, I have to give a shout out to Dr. Kramer as well, because um, and I'm a little biased because I TA for 330, but that was also one of the courses that I found really beneficial and um, which is it's cell biology and physiology, but for uh, anyone who missed in the previous slide. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be one of the courses that if you enjoy biology, you're going to definitely uh, enjoy taking. So look out for that. Also, if we're promoting professors, I'm a TA for Dr. Pick, which is the genetics um, professor this year. Um, and if you're pre-health, like genetics is like one of those required courses that's really important. And Dr. Pick, I would say, is a pretty good professor. And since the TAs are all ILS TAs, they've been through the class. They know what it's like. They're really helpful. Um, I know my freshman year, I went to the TAs all the time and they were really like a big help in me being successful in that course. Thank you, Emily and Mustafa. I totally didn't pay you to say that about cell biology. Or 280. Um, okay. So, questions that still remain open. Uh, Dr. Kramer, uh, I think you just, uh, there's been a lot of questions about this. Just to clarify, if you have not taken AP Bio, you can still go into ILS. There's a <laughs> lot of questions in the, the Q&A. Right. I haven't scrolled through all of them. Thank you for that, Elle. Um, so we're looking for people who have preparation in biology. So you have taken biology classes. You're excited about biology. You would take, you would like to take lots more biology classes. Um, and I think there's another question about CS majors as well. Um, I can answer that. I think, uh, uh, so, I mean, I would say if, if CS is contributing quite a bit to the life sciences, and this is before even AI and machine learning became important tools for biology, public health, and medicine, and they are today. So if you have an interest in combining uh, computer science and life sciences, then ILS will definitely accommodate this, this interest. So. I will throw out there that if you're a computer science major and you do not enjoy taking biology classes, you are not interested in computational biology, bioinformatics, genetics, cell biology, none of these things are exciting to you or fun, um, then you may not enjoy our program. But if they do, then we do have plenty of people who double major with computer science or major in computer science and take the biology classes um, and then uh, do research in, say, bioinformatics or computational biology, depending on their interests. I can also hop on this question because I am that double major. Um, so I do know there are a couple of CS majors in ILS who um, are on the pre-health track, but sometimes they choose to do a CS like major as kind of a backup plan in case they don't get into medical school because there is that possibility. Um, and as to the rigor, it is a really rigorous thing to do. So biology is not an easy major by itself and computer science is already not an easy major by itself. But if you really enjoy both of them, I think, and if you can handle the rigor, um, I think you can look more into it. It's not something that I would recommend for everyone. Like I know I definitely have struggled in some semesters just because the course load is a little heavy. Um, but if it's something that you genuinely really strongly want to pursue, I would say talk to, um, there's plenty of like upperclassmen in ILS who are willing to talk about their experiences. Um, and there's also, you know, all the advising departments who are willing to kind of like help you um, go through that process if you really want to. Just adding on to that, uh, you'll also have peer mentors. Uh, so you will specifically have an older student or multiple older students who are there to answer your questions when you're a freshman. Thank you, Al and Emily for that. And thank you for chiming in about the peer mentor program because we had mentioned that yet. So well done. Um, and Elle, you are one of our peer mentors. I am. <laughs> um, so hopefully we answered your question. Uh, Gretchen asked if the study abroad program is 
every three years incoming freshmen will not have the opportunity. Um, so we consider you part of ILS until you graduate. So our, you can get the citation in two years. So it's meant to be a two year program, um, but some people for various different reasons, including studying abroad um, or whatever reason will finish um, in two and a half years. That's okay too, or three years. Um, however long it takes you to finish your citation, you're still part of ILS. And we end up doing um, a lot of career counseling and advising um, after you finish your citation. We write recommendation letters for med school, for dental school, vet school, um, you name it. So once you're part of ILS, you're part of ILS. And so uh, you will have hopefully a chance at least once during your um, college career to go on the study abroad trip. And we're also working on possibly developing additional study abroad trips, um, depending on how exhausted we are. Uh, to add to that, um... Just because you're an ILS does not mean you can't do other study abroad. Uh, I will be studying abroad for a year next year in Australia, so you definitely can fit it into your schedule. Uh, that being said, I am not a pre-med, so I'm going somewhere that's very particular to my major. So you have to talk to a study abroad office or your advisor, um, but you can do other study abroad programs. I just wanted to add in on that I do have friends from ILS, not personally, but they, um, they're they on a study abroad right now and it has nothing, and they're not a like biological sciences major, but they're still an ILS. So it's perfectly fine to have other interests and still be part of ILS and pursue like traveling or just other interests. So don't limit yourself to just, if you don't, if you're not interested in bio, that's not the end of it, I guess. So to hop on that, um, as a pre-health major, it's really hard to study abroad during like a full semester or even a full year, just because most medical schools don't allow you to um, take any of your pre-med requisites like abroad. So if you do want to study abroad for a semester, you usually have to plan that very early on and people usually push off general education requirements that can be taken abroad. Um, but if you still really want to study abroad and, um, you know, you just find out that you can't really fit it into like a full semester or a year. There's still a lot of summer options or even winter break options. I was gonna study abroad this winter break, um, but for other reasons I wasn't able to, but there are also still those programs available so you can still have that study abroad experience. Okay, um, there's a few questions. Um, while you're still up, Emily, is how rigorous is it um, to do the computer science major? Is it too much? Um, it's okay. It's definitely not easy. I will say, um, if you already have computer science experience in high school, that is really beneficial because you can take exemption exams for the um, um, the lower level um, classes. The other thing is that the CS department is actually limiting the amount of internal transfers that can apply for a double major. So right now they only, for the incoming class, they will only accept 100 internal transfers per year for the CS ma major. So you're already going to com be competing against people in letters and sciences or other majors that want to maybe switch into the CS major or also want to double major. So it's right now it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, the, the other option is the CS minor that is available. That one I don't think has an admission cap. So you can still apply for the minor, still be able to take all of the CS classes and still be able to get that coding experience and that um, like CS theory under your belt in case you want to pursue something like bioinformatics or computational biology. Um. On, on the same lines, um, the reason that so many people can double major and minor and all that is a bunch of people were asking how these classes like count towards credits. Um, some of them are replacement classes, like genetics is a replacement honors course for the genetics course you'd have to take. There are some courses that are added on, um, but generally you can take courses specific to what you want to do, especially in your sophomore year for those courses. And you can, ha you can take the courses that will count towards your major. So it's not a, it's not a huge burden of additional classes on top of a major. Another thing about credits, some of your major courses may end up counting for your gen ed credits as well. 
I, as a psych major, have had several of my psych classes count for gen eds as well. So that's something to also consider. Okay, so we had a question about, there's another pre-med question. So Mustafa, if you don't mind, what kind of resources are there for ILS students, ILS students applying for med school? Yeah, I think um, just in general, I think first of all, the community and ILS that you get um, makes it really, it, it gives you a network that you can work with in order to find opportunities um, in getting a lot of the pre-med, uh, uh, the pre-med requirements in terms of clinical activities and research done. So um, ILS, obviously, because you're in a, a much smaller community than the typical large university uh, classroom setting, allows you to basically meet people both um, in your your level and also those who are TAing or at a higher level to basically give you those opportunities. Um, but I think as a whole, um, UMD does offer a number of different opportunities. For example, the Health Professional Advising Office, where um, you essentially can just break down your plan for getting into med school and um, basically get recommendations for what you can get done. So um, essentially essentially, what I would say is uh, the best thing that you can do and what you can take from ILS is the people that you're surrounded with. So definitely don't be afraid to ask questions and to um, uh, look for opportunities and network. Thank you, Mustafa. Um, and as a side note, the Health Profession Advising Office is available too all of Maryland, um, but their entire job is to help all of our different friends who are interested in um, all the different um, health-related careers. So um, med school, but also um, PA, PT, um, pre-dent, and all of our pre-vet people is actually handled by a different advising office out of the um, College of uh, AGNR, so Agriculture and Natural Resources, um, Animal, Navy, and Sciences Department. Um, trying to see if there's themes. Okay. Um, what is an example of a study abroad program for pre-med students? So I'll go ahead and answer that somewhat preemptively. Um, if you are pre-med, you'll need to take your pre-med requirements in the U.S., or at least that's the preference for U.S. medical schools. Um, other classes you can take in other countries. So we definitely have people in Spain right now, um, or going to be in Italy, although L is not pre-med. Um, but another country is a great chance to say, work on your language skills for that particular country or take other related courses. So our Spanish majors uh, or Spanish double majors or minors can pick up a lot of uh, courses related to that language in the other country. Um, if you're in engineering, they actually have their own separate study abroad office and a collaboration with a university in Spain, which is why I brought that up. Um, but we have people looking and um, and have studied everywhere from um, Italy, Spain, Portugal, um, South Africa, um, Brazil. Some people have done Copenhagen. Oh, yeah. Don't forget. Yes. Thank you. Can't forget Caroline. Um, and um, other study abroad locations. We have an entire education abroad office um, that you can meet with to figure this out. You have to take your, your requirements in country for pre-med. Um, but other than that, um, you have to do your homework to make sure whatever courses that you take abroad um, will match up with your major or other requirements. Sometimes they don't match up right. So do your homework. You need to start at least a semester in advance. If you're engineering, probably start two semesters in advance because it tends to be a very credit head of a major. Um, and uh, you can make it happen. So I, I would, I'm going to, I'm going to say, honestly, no matter what your major is, you want to start planning that as early as possible. I'm an environmental science major. I have a lot of leeway. I did it a year in advance and that was really helpful. <laughs> okay. Um... There are lots of questions. I have, a, I have a good, someone just asked a really good question um, because this is what I was afraid of when I when I was incoming. Does being an ILS ever feel isolating from what's going on at UMD, like you're separated from everything else? I'm going to be honest. UMD has like 36,000 undergraduate students. ILS gives you 
a smaller cohort to be a part of, so you don't get lost in the sheer quantity of students. With there being a lot of students here, it means there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of different classes you can take, a lot of different internships. But there are a lot of students, and ILS is a really good way to kind of bring it all down to a smaller size, because um, there's people readily available for you, and you're not isolated. You're still taking courses with everyone else in your major. You still have the same extracurriculars that other people do, whether you want to do a fraternity, a sorority, boxing, uh, a sport, whatever it is, you're still there. So it, I wouldn't say that it's isolating. I would say that it helps make you into a smaller person. Thank you, Al. Somewhere along the way, someone asked about the size of ILS. Um, so our entering cohort is usually somewhere between um, 75 to 80 and then 95 on the upper end. Kind of depends on the year because we can't predict how many people are going to accept invitations. That's kind of on average for the last several years. Um, so we try to offer smaller classes, accelerated classes, um, peer mentoring, and our goal is to help you acclimate to college in a smaller environment, um, hopefully doing things you like. Um, I like bio. I think it's super cool. Um, okay. Other questions. Um, there is a question. I'm very interested in chemistry and focused on this in high school. Would I be eligible for the program? Um, so we're looking, and there was another question, I think a little bit later about how this process works. So, the way um, prefacing works is you're admitted to honors. You're in honors, congratulations. Um, you're in the honors program. Now we gotta figure out which is the right program for you depending on your interests um, and um, course load and other things. So um, for, for ILS, we're looking for people who are gonna enjoy being here, honestly. So if you're a chem major, that's awesome. We have plenty of chem majors. Um, We'd be a little concerned if you've never taken a biology class in high school, um, just because we're not sure if you actually enjoy bio yet. Um, so if that's the case, address that in the, you know, the there's a little text box for you to enter why you're interested in our program and explain that you're interested in biology. Like I said, we're in, we want you guys to be excited about um, biology because you're going to be taking some serious bio classes and we do not want you to be miserable, friends. Um, we think bio is cool. We like talking about bio. I like talking about viruses because they're super cool and fun and may or may not have freaked out my coworkers when I thought um, that herpes was a really cool virus and we should talk about it. Um, yeah. yeah, Taylor was not super happy when we spent uh, a lot of time on the trip talking about various different viruses and Jayla would sit there and go, why are we talking about this? But viruses are cool. So are fun. I find they're super cool. Anyway, um, I could totally geek out about that too. Um, so just to kind of give you an overview of how this works is you are going to be filling out a preferencing form. In that form, you have some text boxes. Um, so you get to rank your programs, which ones you want, um, and you get to explain to us why you're interested in the programs. We will go through, um, review them, and then we're going to offer you an invitation into one of those programs. Um, and we will try our super best to get you in the top three. I can't guarantee it, but we try our best. Um, it depends on how many people are interested and there's limited number of spots depending on the program and lots of other things. Um, and then you'll be invited to a program and then you have a choice to accept um, the invitation. I am sure that Maryland is not the only university you apply to, although we would love to have you. Um, so you got to figure out what's going to work best for you and your family. Anything I, sh I should add, Najib or Jayla? Um, so I think there's some questions and there's several as I was scanning about how competitive it is, what's the course load look like. Um, yeah, yeah. And then there's a few questions about team building that I'm going to punt to Jayla next, but the, um, I will preemptively say that we would like and we design the courses not to be competitive. Um, we try super hard for things not to be competitive, um, but many of our students have um, are at the top of their classes and they've been the top of their class for like the past, you know, five, six years. Um, and so we do have sometimes lessons about 
um, how to be nice to each other and polite. And um, we build our courses around team building and being in groups. And um, when one of us succeeds, we all succeed. And we want you guys to help each other out with your homework um, and help each other um, to be successful. We like to look at it as when you look around the room, these are gonna be your colleagues, not your competition. Um, but I freely admit you guys are really super bright. And so it's, we're still working on it. I don't think we're there, but we're still working on it. But what any of my current students, and we haven't heard from you, Emily C, um, like to add on to that? Yeah, um, I find ILS like a very collaborative um, environment. Like personally, um, you're living with people on your floor that are also in ILS and also in the same classes as you. So for me, like me and my roommates last year and this year, we'll always like work on the homeworks together. I know a lot of people on my floor, we would all gather in the lounge. And if we ever had any like confusion about homeworks or questions, we'll always ask each other. I know there was also like some study sessions. So I feel like it's a very cl collaborative environment, even outside of ILS and the ILS courses. Um, I know Emily and I are actually in like a bunch of the chem classes together. Um, and just because of that community, we kind of like gravitate towards each other. So I'll ask her about homework or ask other people in ILS that are taking the same classes as me. So you kind of like have that built-in network. And um, in general, in terms of like ILS courses, I feel like they haven't been super rigorous compared to like a lot of other chemistry and bio courses as well. Um, any before we move on to the team building, anything else anyone wants to add? I'll, I'll say the very first month, I was nervous. Like my very first month of freshman year, I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Because I, I had always, I had always been top of my class. You know, there was always that bit of competitive. And then all of a sudden you were in a room of a lot of very, very competitive people. And so there was that first month of like, oh no, is this going to go well? And it really did. Um, very, very quickly, I think we all turned to each other, not on each other. Um, and I, I don't know, I've, I have never felt like, like I have to, to reach above people or have en had any real need to in, in the program. I think people are generally nice. <laughs> yeah, honestly, we're all struggling together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but also like people all generally, like they want to be there and they want to be in those classes. And so it's less of a feeling of like everybody trying to step on top of each other and more of everyone trying to figure it out together. Yeah. I just wanted to like echo what Elle and Emily have been saying. Um, I also came in, I was like ILS. It's also it's 55% pre-med like am I just going to be surrounded by like people who are always you know overworking themselves and like I'm going to like you know com be competing against these people um but I found out that like everyone generally like shares resources like no one's ever really like gatekeeping stuff everyone's really there to you know try and make friends because if you make enemies in ILS it makes your experience really bad um and to talk specifically about chemistry and biochemistry um, if any of you guys were admitted as a chemistry or biochemistry major, there are like specific chemistry department courses that you'll be taking. So like me and Emily have been taking the same classes for two years, basically, um, in one big lecture hall. So you'll get to also really know your chemistry and biochemistry classmates really well. Um, so that's also another like small community that you can um, really like be a part of. Um, and just one last point I want to add. Um, one thing um, when it comes to being competitive, I think ultimately one thing you will realize as you get into the course, read the syllabus, and especially, uh, particularly when talking about ILS courses, is that the only person you're really competing against is yourself. Um, essentially, these courses are not designed to make a certain section of the class pass and a certain section of the class fail. Um, they're, well, they're all designed so that the effort that you put in um, hopefully produces the results that you uh, want to attain. And that and that happens through, you know, your study techniques and just visiting the right people and, and seeing the right people when you, right people when you need help. Um, so make sure to keep that in mind. Um, I've taken a lot of the courses here and I've made a lot of friends through that way. 
And um, at no point did I ever feel that anyone was trying to be competitive or uh, be competitive against me or um, try to sabotage my success in order to um, increase their chances of doing better. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Yeah, like, let's be clear, people are very competitive. It's just that unlike, like, when we were in high school, they're not competitive with the intent on beating other people. They're competitive with themselves and trying to get as far as they can for themselves. But people are competitive, let's be clear. People, they're, people are, people want to get where they want to get. They just don't want to step on other people. And with that, yeah, Jayla, if you could talk a little bit about team building and all the social stuff. Right. And so I think a big part of this is like, we are the living, we are the learning, but we also are the community. We are the program itself. Right. And so it is not just school all the time. There are lots and ample opportunities for you all to connect with each other. And the community is what we are emphasizing and working really hard to emphasize. So I mentioned earlier, we do have a peer mentor family program. That is when you all will come to campus, you will automatically be matched with at least two peer mentors and three other students within our program. And y'all will become your own little family. Um, we will have various program being in events for you all to connect with each other. We This year we had a fall festival, we went to Six Flags. We're having like an ILS casino night formal this spring to my current student surprise. Um, and so there are lots of different other things that are happening. And so while it is a very rigorous program, we also really want to make sure that you all are feeling valued as people and humans and love that also comes from feeling connected with each other. Um, and then when it comes to the competitive nature of things, like we very much emphasize that we everyone has their own path and you follow your own path and looking towards your left and the right and behind it in front of you is not going to help you at all right um and so those are things we talk through those are things we address because these are real life things that are happening that will not only happen in your academic studies but will happen in life in general so you all are people first you are students and we want to make sure that we're taking care of you all and supporting you all in more than just one area so hopefully that helps just a little bit and Jayla's awesome at that. I thought you changed that. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of other questions and shout out to Elle who's been typing in answers. Thank you so much. Um, we are getting a little bit closer in time, so I'm gonna try to choose the best I can. I if we don't get to your question, I apologize. Um, I can stick around for a few minutes after. Um or you can email your questions and I will give you that email address shortly um, so we can make sure you have all the answers that you need. Um, really quick, is it possible to have a roommate that is not an ILS? The answer to that is no, because we require you guys to live together as part of a living learning community and that is one of the requirements. That is only for the first year. After the first year, you can choose who you wanna live with and where you wanna live. Um, so some people stay on campus, some people move off campus. You have the option to continue living in La Plata Hall, but you don't have to. Um, so, but your first year, we force you guys in together to help build that community um, and um, the living part of the living learning environment. Okay. Um, other questions? Um, do, do, do. When was ILS introduced? 2011. So before all of our time was when um, ILS started. Um, there's a question about a bioinformatics major and um, that doesn't actually exist. You can um, make your own major, um, but there doesn't currently exist an undergraduate major for bioinformatics. You can do um, biology and computer science. You can make bioinformatics as a major um, and they're working on building a bioinformatics major, but it doesn't currently exist. Anything to add there, Najib? No, as you said, we're building one. Uh, hopefully, it will be uh, it will arrive maybe in a year or so. Uh, ILS does offer opportunities to prepare you in that direction. Uh, we do combine biology, math, CS for the purpose of better understanding biological data. So we do that in a couple of classes. The first class you take in ILS, and an honors class that we offer for the seniors who wish to learn more about bioinformatics. As of yesterday, the major has officially been approved to be a future major. L has an N on this. Yeah. Um. So, 
Chantal, you're answering the question about roommates. So the question about roommate matching, that's actually handled by Resident Life and you can request roommates, but there's also a roommate finder where you can um, put in your information and find someone who has similar interests and um, lifestyles um, as you. And um... lifestyle is so much more important than interests. <laughs> if you and your roommate have no interests whatsoever, that's fine. But if if one of you likes to go to bed really, really, really late and the other one likes to get up really, really, really early, you will have problems. So Res Life actually handles most of that, but you will be meeting each other during orientation the summer. We will be putting you all into the same Slack group so you can talk to each other during the summer um, and other things. And you will um, hopefully be getting matched up to your peer mentor pretty early in the summer. At least we're hoping to do that. Um, so Make there's also your mentors. They are a resource. Use them. Um, so that will be available to you. So there's two additional questions about neuroscience and neurobiology majors. And I apologize that we are pushing time to get to you guys. If you want to stick around, um, I can try to answer those as best we can, or um, you can email us and we will try to answer those as well, or send them to students who can answer you. Um, but with like the three minutes we have left, um, I wanted to, yeah, thank you to all of our current ILS students who are here. We could not do this without you. You guys are amazing. Um, but with the three minutes I have left, would our current ILSers be willing to think, think back to when you were at this stage trying to figure out where to go to college and what program is the best for you? Um, and what is your one piece of advice for our newly admitted students? And I was going to go around to everyone. Actually, before we do that, I do want to kind of promote a little um, honors ambassadors program that there is. There is a host a student day for admitted honors college students where you can, if you're in the state, you can come to UMD and you can shadow um, an honors ambassador student for a day, or you can also virtually meet with them if you're kind of curious to see what a day in the life would kind of look like. I'm a little unsure about how exactly you can schedule that, but if you contact, um, I think the honors ambassadors website or something along those lines, you can probably find that link. And if that's something that you're interested in, that is also available to you. Look at you, Chantal, being entirely on top of things. So the link is currently in the chat. Um, but not that, Emily, would you like to start us off with your piece of advice for our newly admitted students? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, when I was deciding between like what school I would go to, the one thing is like, other than ILS, because I knew I was going to be pre-med coming into college, is that I was always like, you can make a big, a, a big school feel small, but you can't make a small school feel big. And I knew that I really wanted that like college experience. You know, I wanted to go to the football games. I wanted to be able to, you know, walk around campus, see the people. So if you're kind of debating between whether or not you would like a small school or a big school, um, if you're in honors, you will have that small community. I think that I'll mentioned before that you can kind of like integrate yourself into. Um, and as for advice, um, I would just say take advantage of every opportunity that you're given. Um, I guess this would apply to any school that you go to, um, but especially in your first year, um, go out of your way to meet new people, um, you know, go to the first look fair or whatever club fair you guys have at whatever school you end up going to, um, and really just, you know, put yourself out there because you won't get anywhere if you just stay pulled up in your dorm. Santa, can we keep going or are we over time? We can finish with the students and then we can go. Okay, thank you. Mustafa, we're going in the order that you appear on my screen. It sounds good. Um, so I think this the first thing you have to ask yourself is, you know, I think take a look at UMD. Um, and I guess whenever you figure out uh, what honors program you get into, take a look closer look at that. Potentially visit the campus. And just the first question you have to ask yourself is, do I envision myself here in, in the next four years? And um, is all the information that I've gotten so far um, something that's made me happy and something that's um, and something that um I think I can and something that I, I think I'll enjoy for uh this chapter of my life. Um that's something that um I found uh coming into UMD, uh joining ILS. Um I saw that as something that would help my um 
future academic goals and my future career goals. And, you know, I haven't looked back since. Thank you. Uh, Nithya, you are up next, friend. Um, so I chose UMD in general and ILS because I heard about the research I could get here. And I I believe once I found out about ILS, I fully looked into the research portion of it. And I'm finally doing like a language internship that I've really been wanting to do. So not really like wet lab or bio related, but I'm really into learning languages. So I'm working with dogs and babies. So it's really nice. Um, and then whether or not you come to UMD, I think one main thing I want you guys to consider is not overloading yourself. I know I came from a pretty competitive high school and we all wanted to take all of those STEM courses right off the bat. I would not suggest that, especially because you, you might underestimate the course load of college. There are a lot of lectures you need to cover, other assignments that you need to cover, and it's not simply as filling out a worksheet that your teacher handed to you. So I would definitely lower the course load and make sure you have time to experience college. Like, as I think Emily said, holding up in your apartment or your dorm isn't going to get you anywhere. Go out, kind of visit. I, I the Personally, the first thing I did was visit the food places around campus. So the diners, the off-campus, slightly off-campus restaurants, things like that will help you, I guess, bond with your friends and get used to college life. And then you can ramp up the course load, figure out professionally what you want to do. And yeah, so I guess just take it slow. And that's my main advice. All right, you're up next, though. Honestly, uh... I'm going to say this because I did this and I truly, if, if you have the abilities and you, you, you have the, think about taking a gap year, just once you get into a college, does whether you go here or you go somewhere else, you can apply to take a gap year after being already admitted. Um, and if that is something that you have been thinking about and you're too afraid to do it, do it. Best decision I ever made. Um, if you don't, however, college College is is a place where you you have the the time and you have the availability and to do all of these new things. At the University of Maryland, we have hundreds, if not maybe a thousand clubs ranging from like ballroom dance to a taco is a sandwich club. Um, so <laughs> whatever you are interested in, there is someone else on campus who is also interested in it, too. And don't be afraid to seek those people out. <laughs> sorry I'm laughing because apparently tacos are not sandwiches and you can join that club <laughs> and debate to your heart's content um Emily Chan you're up last yeah I think what really drew me to ILS was also the research I never done like any research in high school at all and I just kind of wanted to like try it out and I feel like ILS really gave me the opportunity to do that and I also like the small community that it has um my roommates and I, we were actually random from um, in ILS. We're in a triple, um, but we're like the best of friends. I actually am rooming with them again this year. So I really like all the friends. All my closest, are fr all my closest friends are from ILS. Um, in terms of UMD, um, I like how close it is to DC. There's a lot of opportunities there. Um, my friends and I will just take the Metro um, and go visit a museum in DC. I think it's great just to like go out there, try something new, take all the classes like you've never thought about taking before. So uh, with that, we have gone over time. I apologize to everyone. Um, I want to additionally thank all of our honors ambassadors, all of our current ILS students. Thank you all for coming. We couldn't do this without you. Um, to all of our admitted students, we're happy to answer questions. Um, so email is ilsstashhonors at umd.edu and we will happy to um, answer any questions we dig into tonight. Um, we tried our best to get to everything, but we kind of ran out of time. Um, but yes, please let us know. We're happy to help. We're excited to have you. Congratulations on being admitted to Maryland and being honors terps. Um, and we wish you luck finishing up uh, your senior year and um, embarking on this next chapter of your life.
Um, and we'd be excited to have you as part of Xylas. So with that, thank you so much. Um, I will stick around for a few minutes if there's lingering questions. And to my current ILSers, we have we have mugs and other things available for you in the office. Uh... Thank you <laughs> Good night, so everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, guys, don't forget to fill out your program prefacing form by February 19th. If you have any questions, I put all of our contact information in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.